I will continue with Coach Cody Burns to ask a question to Coach Burns. Please hit the raise your hand function. We'll start with Patrick Brown and then we'll go to Rob Lewis. Hey, Cody. Coach Golish on Saturday mentioned uh, Bayless and, and Jimmy Callaway. It's a couple of guys that were doing pretty well at the wide receiver group so far. With, with Callaway, didn't really play a whole lot on offense last season. What have, your, what have been your impressions of him, not only in these three practices, but in workouts and, and since you got the job here? Well, I think Jimmy Callaway's got the right approach every single day. Um, I think he's a kid that's extremely hungry. <clears throat> One of the more impressive things about Jimmy, he was a quarterback in high school. And so I think you can really see that translating to the uh, football field in college right now as far as being able to pick up the offense really quick, um, understanding defenses, understanding leverage. I think it's really played in his favor uh, thus far. He's done a really good job so far. Um, really, Bayless, you know, one of the biggest things with Bayless, he's got time on task. Um, he was a starter at USC, played a lot of football in the Pac-12, and also has played here at Tennessee as well. So he's a veteran. Um, and like I said, it's very hard to coach or get experience in this league, and that's something that Bayless does have. Coach, of, the, of those four sophomores you've got, uh, Jalen, you know, got on the field quite a bit last year, but the other three, you just talked about Jimmy and then um, Holiday and, and Weidman, you know, didn't get as much play time. Just what have you seen from that group of four sophomores in general in terms of their development? Uh, got to really bring those guys along. Um, all very talented um, to, to some degree. Uh, and right now I'm really focusing on developing those guys and teaching them how to, how to practice, how we do things here at Tennessee, how we play up tempo, the simple things that we call ball mechanics and just teaching those guys how we play. Because I think there's no question that all four have talent. Um, just got to truly grow them and develop them um, into the wide receiver position. Because even a guy like Malachi Weidman was a dual sport athlete, basketball player, did play football. And then when you talk about the two Jimmies, both of those guys were quarterbacks in high school. So really just translating those skills to the actual wide receiver position is my job to truly develop and bring those guys along. David Ubbin and Trey Wallace. Uh, yeah, Cody, how much do you anticipate Jalen and and uh, and Malachi be able to do this this uh, spring? We saw they're limited out there, and and uh, what have you seen, uh, you know, from your group today uh, with pads on? Uh, really trying to be real precautionary um, with those guys. Just want to be smart, make sure we get them through spring. I can't give you an exact timetable exactly when those guys will be practicing full speed, um, but we're hopeful to get those guys here back pretty soon. Um, as a whole today, I think we're starting to understand how to practice. Um, they're starting to play with a different sense of urgency that we're looking for. We do have to get a lot more physical. This is the first day we have pads on. And I'm expecting a lot as far as a physicality standpoint, especially being here at Tennessee in the SEC. I know what it takes as far as a physicality uh, standpoint. So we've really got to continue to develop that and uh, really just be tougher as a group. And I think we're going to get there. Cody, when you when you look at the wide receiver group and the leadership, especially coming from winter, then when you got here now and now went to spring, uh, is is there one or two players on your side of the ball in your group that have stepped up and become the the vocal leaders that you need as a coach? Well, I'll tell you this: um, in the past, there, there's been a couple guys um, that obviously we got one right now um, that obviously just went through the, the uh, pro day, and also a guy like Juwan Jennings that played a lot of football here. And so when you talk about leadership, those guys had a lot of time on task. And now you're, you're, you're walking into a really young group. And I think by default, and, and really not just by default, but also just his personality, uh, time on task, uh, as far as him starting at a different school and also coming here at Tennessee and doing the same thing. Uh, Bayless Jones has kind of stepped up and emerged as, as one of those guys that can truly grow these young guys, teach them how to practice, uh, teach them what the standard is and what we're looking for. And uh, so he's really taken, uh, taken um, uh, right after me as far as what I'm asking and really trying to teach those young guys on exactly what we're looking for. So he's done a good job thus far. Wes Rucker, then Austin Price. Yeah, Cody, I'm wondering how difficult it is to get guys to to play with the pace y'all want them to play with at, at receiver. I mean, is that something that both from a from a physical standpoint and also from a mental standpoint, how how difficult can that process be to learn? Well, you know, the thing is, that's that's who we are. That's what we do. And so uh, to some people, it may be difficult, but to us, it's it's the way of life. And so we got to get with the program. We got to understand what the standard is, what Coach Hype wants offensively, and that's to play fast. That's to line up and play faster than your opponent. That's who we are. Because once you get to the fourth quarter, you'll see those things pay off by playing with that pace 
the entire game. And so that's something that we're constantly on these guys about each and every day, not just on the practice field, but on the meetings. How could you have been more efficient as far as getting the ball back to the referee on this play? Um, just playing with different type of tempo, ball mechanics, making sure that we're coaching those things, not just on the field, but also in the meeting room. Hey, Coach, you, you guys they referenced Malachi and, and Jalen earlier. Um, David did. Um, you're not too far from, removed from playing college football and winning a national title. How much can you impress upon those guys as a guy that's, you know, not too old um, and relatable um, that, hey, I know you guys want to push yourself to get back because it's a new staff and you want to try to make your mark with us, but, you know, you don't need to rush yourself and you need to take your time and get healthy first. Right. I mean, just really, like you said, I've, I've played in this league, um, played at a high level, um, was fortunate enough to win a national championship. So I've really been there. I've done that. And I'm not too far removed to really have a true relationship with these guys and tell them the different things that I went through as a player and also my day-to-day -day struggles and my frustrations with football off the field, uh, different things just to relate to those guys. And so obviously being out, you're going to be a frustrated guy if you truly love the game of football, but also that should truly be motivation. You know, the way I approach it is truly you have to approach this time like a pro. And if I'm a professional athlete, I'm doing everything I can to get back on that field. So whether that be living in the training room, in between classes, in between meetings, we just got to continue to coach these guys on what it looks like to be a pro. Ben McKee, then Gustavo. Hey, Cody. I was just curious as to what you've seen out of Anderson, Kobe, and, and Walker Merrill these first couple of days of, of practice and maybe what uh, role you envisioned them having in the receiver room uh, early on. I tell you what, the most impressive thing about Walker and Anderson is they truly care. Um, I think they put in extra work. They got a lot of time on task. Even though they're young, I think they've really started to step up and be very confident in who they are, be very confident in what we're asking them to do in the offense. And I think uh, as, as long as they continue to develop, I think hopefully that those guys can help us, help us at some point down the road. So thus far, I've been extremely impressed with both of those kids. It's more so with me, just the mental aspect of it, because high school is one thing. When you're just a man, the ball's always coming to you. Everything typically goes your way. But once you get to a place like Tennessee in the SEC, everybody here is good. And so just the, the sense of urgency that they've had, the understanding of the playbook, the mental aspect of the game has been very impressive so far with both of those guys. Coach, uh, first outside practice, you know, full pads, you know, could do reps. How do you see the, that practice today? You, I bet you did more reps than probably you did probably ever last week. Yeah, uh, the first practice outside for sure, it was good to actually see the sun um, fly around. I think it's a little bit different anytime you're outside. But I will tell you, I doubt that we were any any short of reps from the first two practices. We, we practice <laughs> and we're going full speed, man, those guys. Uh, uh, do a really good job, but that's one thing we're going to do, regardless if we're inside or outside, we're going to go full speed, we're going to practice, we're going to get our work in, and that's what we've done today as well. Last two questions, Blake, then Matt Ray. Yeah, Cody, uh, I wanted to ask you you know, off the field about uh, recruiting, uh, kind of big picture, and what's What's the sales pitch for Tennessee for a, a 2022 prospect right now? And, and, um, and how does Tennessee, um, you know, build some, some momentum uh, with, with upcoming recruits? To be honest, uh, to sell Tennessee, it's not very hard at all. Tennessee is one of the most storied traditions in all of college football. Um, just the amount of national titles, the amount of SEC championships. And it wasn't that long ago that Tennessee was on the top. And so the sale really is to why would you not want to be a part of, of getting Tennessee back to the standard of Tennessee football? You look at the campus, you look at the facilities being second to none, and then now coaching the wide receivers here at Tennessee, the style of offense. And I think that once guys start to see what we're doing in the spring game this fall coming up as, as much as how we're going to throw the ball, what we do, the tempo at which we play, uh, play with, and how different that we're going to be offensively than everybody else in the SEC, I don't think that it's going to be a hard sell once we start putting things on film that kids can truly see. And, and like I said, with that being said, outside of the football aspect, Tennessee is a story tradition. And, uh, man, if I'm one of these young cats out there, a chance to play at Tennessee means something. And to play here at Rocky Top in front of 102,000, and that sells itself. So um, it, it's a blessing to be here truly. 
And I hope that those kids really understand that. And that's what I'm trying to get them to do um, in recruiting. Hey, Cody, Matt Ray with Sports Illustrated. Um, you talked a little bit earlier about Jimmy Callaway playing quarterback in high school and it helping him along understanding the leverage. Um, you know, looking back to your playing days, played both positions. How do you feel like that has helped you um, get to the level you are as a wide receivers coach now? Correct. So uh, my story is very similar to a couple of guys that we have on our team right now. I was a quarterback my entire life. That's what I did. That's who I was. Never caught a pass in my life. And so once I was a junior in college, I actually ended up moving to wide receiver. And that transition for me was not that difficult because I understood coverages. I understood the run game. I understood the pass game. I understood leverage. I understood what defenses were trying to take away and do. And so that made me more knowledgeable as a player. And I, I had to teach myself how to catch, um, which I did. I ended up starting in the, in the league. But just the transition from quarterback to wide receiver, um, I think, is very, very uh, simple from the standpoint of a knowledge aspect of, of the game. And so me and my coaching philosophy, I like to teach the wide receivers the position as a quarterback because I think it makes you a better wide out when you truly understand the game as a quarterback, not just what you do, but understand big picture. And that makes you a better player um, overall. David, really quickly, did you have a follow up? Uh, yeah, just real quick. Uh, Cody, in this offense, how do you guys differentiate between the receiver spots? Do you have the sort of the traditional three and, and how unique are those? How interchangeable are those? Uh, very interchangeable. Um, right now, just introducing the offense, we're really trying to leave guys in certain spots so they get very familiar with what we're trying to get done. And then as we continue to grow and get familiar with everybody's positions, then we can start to mix and match, move guys around a little bit and see who your true playmakers are and make sure we're getting those guys the ball. So we're definitely going to be multiple and interchangeable as far as that goes. You're not just going to be stuck in one spot. Thank you, coach. All right, appreciate it. Thank you.